Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. So, when I posted a video on measuring the uh, bullet velocity of a 44 Magnum round fired from different guns with different barrel lengths, one of my viewers requested that I do a similar test using, you know, 22 rimfire. Uh, obviously, 22 is another caliber that's available in a variety of firearms with a wide variety of barrel lengths. Now, personally, I don't think we're going to see nearly as much difference in muzzle velocity with the 22 rimfire as we did with the 44 Magnum. Just because 22 rimfire tends to be loaded with a very fast burning flake type powder. Uh, but, you know, there's one way to find out for sure, and so that's what we're doing today. Uh, I've actually got two automatic 22 pistols, uh, both with three inch barrels. Uh, I'm curious to see if there's going to be any measurable difference uh, between guns with the same barrel length, but just different makes and models. Uh, and then I've got the Heritage Arms Rough Rider with the six inch barrel. and then my Marlin Model 60 with a 22 inch barrel. So I think that kind of spans the whole spectrum of available barrel lengths. Uh, I'm going to be using Remington Golden Bullet uh, ammunition for all of these tests. I think that's going to be a pretty uh, you know, typical representative 22 long rifle round for this testing. So without further ado, Let's start shooting some rounds across the chronograph and see what kind of velocities we can get. Okay, so with the one uh, automatic handgun with the three inch barrel, uh, we were getting an average velocity of 992 feet per second, plus or minus about eight feet per second standard deviation. Uh, with the other three inch barreled automatic handgun, I was getting an average velocity of 950 feet per second, plus or minus about 12 feet per second standard deviation. So there was actually a measurable difference uh, between the velocities of these two guns, even though they're you know, the same type of firearm with the same barrel length. You know, it's not a huge uh, difference, about 40 feet per second out of almost 1,000, so you know, about 4%, uh, but that's still about four standard deviations, uh, so uh, definitely a statistically significant difference between the two. Anyway, in either case, uh, just a little bit less than a thousand feet per second with a three inch barrel, and that will give us eh, 72 to 79 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. Meanwhile, with the uh, six inch barreled revolver, I was getting an average velocity of 1,094 feet per second, plus, plus or minus about 24 feet per second standard deviation, uh, and that gave me a kinetic energy of about 95.7 foot-pounds on average. 
Uh, and then with the uh, Marlin rifle with the 22 inch barrel, I was getting an average velocity of uh, 1,227 feet per second, plus or minus about 18 feet per second standard deviation, and giving me an average energy of about 120 foot-pounds. So definitely not as much uh, of a difference here as we saw with the 44 Magnum, but still more than I might have expected. I mean, you know, going from the, the rifle with the 22-inch barrel down to a handgun with a 3-inch barrel, you know, we are losing about 15 to 20 percent of our velocity and almost 35 percent of our kinetic energy uh, with the 22 rimfire round. Now, is that a significant difference in practice? Well, just like we did with the 44 Magnum, let's now shoot some targets with these different guns and see if we can see a difference in the effect that the bullet has on different types of targets. First off, let's try shooting a stack of uh, 2x6 wood blocks. See how many of those the 22 bullet will go through. Okay, so I shot the wood blocks twice with each of the uh, different barrel lengths. Uh, the three inch barreled uh, handgun over here, the six inch revolver over here, and the uh, 22 inch barreled rifle in the middle. Uh, I don't see any exit holes, so there should be six 22 bullets in here somewhere. Let's see if we can figure out how deep they went. Looking at the uh, topmost block, if we turn it over, the three inch barrel, none of them actually went through it. You can see the one bullet just kind of barely poking out there. Uh, so there's one round, and then the other one is presumably in that lump. Yeah. So there's our two three-inch barreled shots, and neither one of them penetrated the, the first two-by-six block, which is only an inch and a half thick, actually. Uh, the six-inch barrel, we see one of them is right there, and then the other one actually made it clean through the block. And then it looks to me like both of these from the rifle are exit holes. Looking at the second block, well, we see some dents from the bullets that dented the back but didn't come out of the first one. Then we see entrance holes from the one revolver round and the two rifle rounds. And then we flip it over and we don't see anything disturbing the back surface of the block. So those other three bullets are caught somewhere in the middle of this block and I don't know that I can effectively dig them out or that it would really be that informative to do so. In any case, we do seem to see a slight but noticeable increase in a depth of penetration into wood blocks uh, when shooting 22 ammunition out of longer barrels. Next, I'll try shooting this piece of heavy sheet metal. Uh, I want to say that this is 14 gauge type 304L stainless.
So there's our dents made by the uh, automatic, the revolver, and the rifle. Honestly, they all look pretty similar. I mean, knowing which was which and knowing that the velocities are higher out of the revolver and out of the rifle, I might be able to convince myself that those dents are a little bit deeper, but if I didn't know which was which up front, I probably wouldn't be able to tell them apart. And finally, we will shoot an empty soda can, which I have refilled with water. Well, there's the can that I hit with the automatic, you know, with the three inch barrel. There's the one I shot with the uh, revolver with the six inch barrel. And there's the one I shot with the rifle with the 22 inch barrel. You know, it's pretty obvious which one I shot with the shortest barrel. Uh, this, uh, this can just barely kind of split open. I'm actually surprised at how much of a difference there was there. It, it wasn't quite a centered hit. You know, maybe the fact that it was off-center uh, also contributed to there being less damage to the can. Um, I wouldn't have expected it to contribute that much, but that is a possibility. Just looking at the cans, I can't necessarily tell a significant visible difference between the rifle and the revolver, the 6-inch barrel and the 22-inch barrel. But I think what we'll see in the video footage, you know, what I thought I saw when I was shooting them, was it looked like the uh, explosion when the can was hit by the rifle round was definitely a little bit more energetic than the revolver round. Uh, at least that's certainly what we would expect, given that we know that the uh, rifle round has more kinetic energy. Um, but anyway, I think this certainly gave me a better perspective on uh, how much velocity and energy difference there is between 22 rimfire rounds fired from different barrel lengths. Uh, hopefully you found it informative as well, and thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.